Are you impatient? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to wait. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? You know, Danny, I struggle with patience. And when I say struggle, I mean like, oh, this is the big one. How are you dealing with patience? Not great. Well, I, you know, I think... Sometimes I think I can be very patient in certain circumstances. When I don't want lot... something, I'm totally patient. Yeah. It... <laughs> <laughs> if it has nothing to do with me or if I don't want to do something and it's taking longer to get there, I'm great. No, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, it sucks. It's hard. Everything, because everything takes, you know, it's like, because we have so much time. Like, I know I have a lot of time, you know, but at the same time, it's like you also, like, you you imagine these futures and you you imagine the work you're doing leading to something and you want it now you don't want to wait till like you know yeah it's great in five years i'm sure i'm going to see it again because if you like we've talked about self-comparisons all the time right if i compare myself to five years ago doing awesome but like i also want to like fast forward to that now it's like uh what was that remember that adam sandler movie with christopher walken where he had like the, oh, the remote control click, click. that's what yeah there you go yeah but like he fast forwarded through everything and like you know it was sad and he's like oh whatever but like, yeah but like it feels like that sometimes like it's like you know like you're learning these things you want to be like especially with like i know myself and i know you too like with learning like you you want to be like an expert now because you know you can be it's just a matter of like time you know <laughs> like yeah and time's Dude, hard this, this week i had like a breakdown because i was like am i actually making any progress and then I smacked myself upside the head and I was like, hang on, you're like literally making insane progress on multiple fronts. And you're asking yourself if I'm making any progress. It's like because you get you take it for granted, I guess I take it for granted yeah. that like making progress. And it's like, oh, it's not, you know, it, it was this fast before it should be faster now and then faster now. And it's like, hang on, you're making progress. Like, let's just slow down and enjoy. Yeah, I think the other problem, too, is like with waiting is like, you know, you want things to happen so fast too that you also lose perspective and you like i'll end up like end up like doing way too much and then not doing anything else that i actually enjoy and missing out on things that i actually want to do or that actually matter to me you know so it's like it's this catch-22 because it's like you want to make things progress so fast and at the same time it's like you know you're failing to like live your life you know or failing to like pay attention to the people around you or like listen or whatever you know yeah, that's a really hard one trying to actually live life and get done all the stuff that you need to do. And it's just like there's on a regular basis, I find where I'm just like almost lost in terms of direction, where to go, what to do, what's important, okay. what's not important. Yeah, constantly. Right. And like, and you know, the other hard thing, too, I'll tell you another from personal experience, like, you know, like I know, like, like, I know where I want to be. And like, I, part of my motivation for wanting to be there is I want to take care of the people that I love and all. And it's like, but like, I want that to happen faster, too. Because like, nobody wants to feel like a burden or like, whatever. And nobody wants, you know what I mean? Like, all that stuff, too, adds up into that. And it makes it really hard. And like, I think there's just a lot of, and there's also like, in, in especially in the US, there's a lot of pressure on like, instantaneous or at least that's what we sell is instantaneous success which is total bs Dude, the Never overnight happens. success that's the story yeah. that's the story of america overnight success he yeah. was an overnight success my favorite one too i think was the one you told me about where the guy was like writing a block for like eight years and then some it took off like after that and they were like an overnight success and it's, he was like no i've been doing this for eight years every day mm -hmm. like you know but yeah that's what it is yeah, Wait. people people don't see all the work that goes into it. They just see how all of a sudden overnight success. I mean, it's like uh, that Martha Beck, great author. And it's like, oh, overnight success. She's an Oprah bestseller. And then you actually look and it's like she is prolific in her writing. She has written so many books like over and over and over again. And it's just like that's probably why she's gotten the success she has because she's just done it so much and so often. Yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. tough too though it is it's just like waiting is like one of the hardest things i think in the world it really is we all want things now you know it's and i think we've been i think we've been poisoned by culture that relies on instantaneous gratification on things being faster and faster you know it's like we had 
five day shipping wasn't good enough. We needed like next day delivery and then we needed same day delivery, you know, like internet and all keeps getting faster. So communication keeps getting faster. Like we used to have to mail letters. Like I remember, I actually remember being an undergrad when AOL instant messenger came out. Remember that thing? Mm -hmm. Because like there wasn't, there wasn't any social media at the time. But that was like amazing because I remember like everybody in school would leave it up on their computer. So like you could like communicate with anyone else on campus that way. Like, yeah, what are you doing? You know, and like whatever. And it was amazing because it was instant. Like you just or you could post a message like, hey, I'm going to this place and everybody would know. And it was like it was fantastic. And like, but we've gotten so used to it that we also forget things take time. Like Mm -hmm. or like, you know. I remember going to like trying to do research, going to the library and a book would be out and having to wait for the book. And now I'm like, I want it now. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, writing papers is so much easier. I did. Oh God, I, yeah. I mean, we both did our undergrad over 20 years ago and then uh, I'm doing a master's now. And yeah, it's just so much easier because uh, you can just search stuff online and you can yeah. find the articles. You can literally, and and plus, like with Kindle, you can search in books for finding anything in there. It makes it yeah. so much faster. You don't actually PDF. have to look through the book. You can search for books in PDF too, and everything. Like, yeah, you can mm-hmm. on your on your computer, and I mean, you can have Chat GPT write your whole paper. You know, do mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it. Is thing. back in my day, you had to walk uphill both <laughs> ways to school in the snow. Yeah. You didn't have some AI. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, but this episode. Uh, I actually was thinking about it because I was listening to this uh, thing about waiting with expectancy. So like a lot of the times I get into trouble waiting because I'm not convinced that it's going to happen. I don't know with certainty that it's coming. And so this talked about waiting with expectancy, like expecting that it's yours or that it's going to happen or that it's done. And all you need to do is just be patient. It talked about how like a farmer plants the seeds and then doesn't worry for six months. Oh, is the harvest going to come? Is the harvest going to come? No, you just plant the seeds, you water it, and then the harvest comes. You know, and and that's the way we should be with things that we're waiting for in life. Because if we plant the seeds, if we do the right actions, it's going to come. Yeah, you know it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, <laughs> my partner she always gets mad at me. She doesn't like I'm like overly optimistic about everything that has to do with like our life and part of it is because like if i'm not i get wildly depressed like so I, it's like a swing you know i swing yeah. that way you know it's like a <laughs> pendulum so like but i it, and that's exactly it like like i have to keep in mind that, like what i'm doing is directed towards something and that it will pay off otherwise i have i cannot do it there's i have no motivation to do it right because what would be the point if i knew it was going to fail i wouldn't waste all my energies doing it so it's like mm-hmm. I have to believe that it's going to work out. Otherwise, you know, it's just there's words pointless, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I really like the concept of sowing the seeds. Like uh, I think one of the parables was talked about in the Bible somewhere about like the someone was sowing seeds and the birds ate some of them and they didn't come up. And then some got tossed on dry ground and they didn't come up. And then other ones got tossed in brambles and they got choked out. But he continued sowing seeds and the ones who made it to fertile ground multiplied a hundredfold. So like for me, that's actually kind of a life lesson in that, you know, not everything's going to pan out. You just need Bible's to keep on got a lot, It's got a lot of life lessons. You know, it's <laughs> like, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's not a more popular book. <laughs> all mythologies, though, all mythologies have that though. And that's the point of all those stories, right? Is that like, you know, mm-hmm. like, yes, your efforts are going to fail. In some cases, you can't expect 100% success on everything. But if you keep trying, you will get success. And I think that's that's the other thing. And we've mentioned it a hundred times. Like The only way you fail is by not doing something, right? Or by quitting. But if you just keep at it, something will eventually take root and grow to keep with the metaphor mm. of sowing seeds. That was, that was really nice. You were <laughs> yeah. on there. Yeah, another thing. So, uh, you know, I used to I used to when I was going to sleep, I would read fantasy books because I thought like, you know, not reading anything. But then I started reading some more like uh, I I guess like positive mentality books or something like that. So I was actually reading the the what is it? The Way of Integrity last night. And she was talking about some stuff from Byron Katie, who uh, had the four questions. And 
it, it struck me last night and it was the coolest thing that I was reading it before I went to sleep because I must have been thinking about it all night because it was what I was thinking about when I woke up in the morning too. It was this thing that uh, when I believe my thoughts, I suffer. When I don't believe my thoughts, I don't suffer. And it was just like, holy cow. Because I was looking like recently I've been suffering quite a bit, particularly because I've had these thoughts that I've believed. And what if they're not true? You know, can I can I know absolutely that they're true? No. So, like, if I can recognize that they're thoughts and not believe them, I might suffer a bit less. I deal with that all the time. I've been dealing with that a lot this last, like, uh, couple of weeks myself, too, because I feel like I've been, like, I I feel like I it's like a roller coaster always for me where I go, like, I have, like, almost, like, highs and lows constantly, you know? I think everybody does probably, right? But recently, and it's especially when I'm tired, you know, I get really depressed. And then, like, then as soon as I start to get down, my imagination just starts going wild, right? It's like, this is worthless. This will never work out. Like, blah, 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 blah. But usually by the next morning, I'm fine. And I start doing stuff again. And, you know, it's you feel better about it. But like, I always try to try to catch myself when I'm doing that and just tell myself, like, this is just, it's just a stupid, like, you're just imagining this, like, right? It's just, it's not real. This is just because you feel bad in the moment. You didn't eat. You're tired, whatever. Maybe you need sleep. Maybe you're overworked. Who knows what the situation is? Maybe you need a break. You know, because I don't really, like, you know, take time off necessarily. I just go. <laughs> and, like, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Dude, tough. I mean, I'm pretty convinced that lacking sleep is just as bad for you as, like, drinking heavily. Because they, I remember hearing studies about, uh, people who drove when they're tired, like when they haven't slept for over 24 hours and they were doing just as bad as people who were drunk. And then also I've had the experience when I'm really, really tired, I'll be in a terrible mood and then I'll go to sleep. I'll wake up the next morning. And I was like, man, I felt like I was drunk last night and I didn't drink, but it was just, yeah. I was so tired. It was, yeah. Well, I say, you know, that's like, I think, uh, I remember, I, I think I, I thought I read that, that the number one cause of accidents is, is tiredness it's like because you get you just aren't paying attention your reaction time slows down especially like truck drivers it's a big big one for um i remember like there wasn't long ago that like it was a, a walmart truck driver crashed because he was basically overworked you know and like sleepy and you can't respond to things and so it's yeah it makes sense mm-hmm. but i think this is the problem right with waiting is like we still want it to happen even though you know, we might also need to take a break and like give ourselves a chance to recoup or regroup or whatever. Mm. So do you have any tips for waiting? How does one wait? I I wish somebody would tell me because it's really hard. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) So like, okay, I'll give, I'll start with a couple and then you can have a couple. So I heard a saying once time takes time. And it's like, I keep trying to find the shortcut around time. You know, and it's like, you can't, time takes time. You know, there's no, there's no shortcut. So just reminding myself that it is something that takes time. That's you know, funny. one thing that I find helpful. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm really bad with time. And I found out recently, and actually I didn't find out. Somebody explained it to me and it made sense. But I, I'm, I'm really good at estimating the time things will take, but I don't ever factor in like the other stuff. Like, so, like, I know how long, so for, to give you an, a for instance, right, like, say I had to run to the store to pick something up. Like, I know I can guess how long it's going to take me to go get the thing at the store, but I don't factor in the drive time. So, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll be 10 minutes. But, like, it's impossible to do in 10 minutes because, you know, it takes 10 minutes to get there and back. So, it's uh-huh. like, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. And I have a very big tendency to do that. So, I've been trying to do that more with time is, like recognize that time not only takes time but that there's also going to be other obstacles unforeseen that i need to account for with that time you know Mm -hmm. yeah that's a good one be adding it all up uh i another thing that i find helpful with uh waiting is actually writing down everything that I'm up to because I get impatient because I lose track of all the stuff that I'm up to. Yeah. And yeah. when something, when one thing out of a hundred things I'm doing isn't going as fast as I should, I have a conniption. 
So yeah, uh, yeah. So when when I'm being very impatient, I like to write down all the stuff that I'm up to. One, so that I can see everything that I think I should be doing, but two, also to help me prioritize and figure out what's actually important. Because generally, when I'm impatient, it's because I'm not focusing on what's important. I was going to say prioritization is like probably like number one, because that I find is, yeah, where it throws you off all the time and you think you need to get something done, but it doesn't matter or it's really not that big of a deal and you're making it out to be way more, right? You're making like a, what are they, what's that saying? You're making a, a mountain out of a molehill or something. Is that mm, it? Something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, like, and you see it all the time. I mean, look at your own life. I'm sure somebody knows somebody like who thinks their work is way more important than it is or something or like gets so stressed out about it and it's like you know dude all of us yeah. we're all yeah. dead in a hundred years no yeah. one's gonna remember any of us so anything that we're that's so important guess what it's not no it's not that important so i think i think that's a good one too it's like just remembering like life is short like and are you really do you really want to waste your time being in this state of like angst stress worry because you're you're rushing it when should you really be rushing it do you want to rush to that final end line and mm -hmm. get there faster and if you're stressed you're going to get there faster <laughs> you know? yeah Dude, even the people who are like super stressed like no it's like really important that i have this family and that i do well for my family and they know what that i contributed and it's like get over yourself do you know your great great grandfathers mm -mm. yeah no are you even interacting with the family that you have now? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. Right? Yeah. I would say too, I would add um, you know, just taking a step back and taking a break sometimes is really helpful. Cause like I know a lot of times for me, like when I cannot wait it, it, nine times out of ten it's because I need to take a break. Like I'm, you know, pushing too hard or something, and you need to just take a step back. And that can really help you see that like it's not as important as it is, or you know. Like we've said before, self comparisons, I think, are a great way to to realize like the progress you've actually made and put it into real perspective rather than like because like we're so quick to compare ourselves to others and be like, well, I'm not there yet. I don't have ten million dollars. I don't have my own business. I don't have this or that. I don't have a house. I don't have what a failure. You know, yeah, right. Exactly. Total failure. But when you look at your own life, if you compare yourself, well, if I've made any strides in the last year compared to how, where I was last year, I'm doing great, you know, because I am moving forward. Dude, just to be alive, you've already won the freaking lottery. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's what you think about that. Like, you know, all these things happen that your consciousness happened to be here. Like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Already a freaking lottery. And just to wake up, you know, just to wake up every day. A lot of people don't. Yeah. Many mm. people don't. Yeah. Most people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of like the it's a paradox is that when you're impatient, you need to just like I heard somebody somewhere say where it's like when you don't have enough time in the day to do what you're doing, you should take time out to meditate. Yeah. And it's like, what? No way. I need I need more time. I can't sit on a cushion for a half an hour. And it's like, well, go go do that. You know, and it's like it's crazy because usually that's what we need. We just need to still our mind or yeah. just like settle instead of yeah. instead of running around like a chicken without our head. Meditation off. I, is a great one, actually, mm -hmm. when you when you're when you're struggling with waiting is is actually taking time. And I would argue incorporating it into every day. There's like a mm -hmm. and look online. You can find a million like, you know, however long you want to do it. Five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute things. And I like. Mm -hmm. I personally like doing it without any kind of instruction, but like, I think if it, if you really have a hard time with clearing your mind, sometimes like um, those ambient sound type things are good, like water trickling or something or rainfall or mm -hmm. something can be really helpful to listen to or just noise canceling headphones. Mm -hmm. Really good. And, and the cool thing is you can't do meditation wrong. No. Everybody stops <laughs> because they're like, I can't clear my mind. And it's like, well, guess what? You're not supposed to. Nobody clears yeah. their mind. Senior monks don't clear their mind. You know, no. it's just like, that's a byproduct that sometimes occurs when you meditate, but really you're just watching your mind. So you can't do it wrong. Uh, so yeah. Did you ever read, sure. did you ever read, uh, it was by Suzuki, I think it's called, a uh, Oh yeah, Zen that's mind. a good one. Zen Mind mm -hmm. Beginner's Mind. Dude, it's yeah. like one of my favorite books. Yeah. And he talks about mm -hmm. the big brain and the little brain, you know, and like how like, you know, we have all these thoughts coming and we want to cling to them. 
And like all meditation is, is just letting them go. And I think mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do for yourself is afterwards, ask yourself, like, why did these thoughts arise? Because that a lot of times gets you to the core root of like what my stresses are, what my problems are, what I'm worried about, what my fears are. So I think, you know, that's another thing with waiting, too, I think, is like facing our fears. Because I think most of us were impatient because we're afraid. We're afraid we're going to fail. We're afraid we're not going to be good enough. We're afraid we're going to succeed. We're afraid we're going to not find love. We're afraid we're going to find love. I mean, like, we're afraid of everything. And so, <laughs> so and we're usually literally. afraid of both things happening. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, that's the insane part, right? Like, it's like, nope. we are, we are terribly equipped to deal with this life. But like, you know, <laughs> just mm -hmm. trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there was a, there was also a story from uh, um, the power of positive thinking where he was talking about how a very, very busy guy went to go see a doctor because he was somewhat stressed. And he was this guy who would bring home his briefcase every day with like hours of work to do at home after he left the office. And the doctor said to him, he's like, if I give you a prescription, will you follow it? And the guy said, yeah, yeah, sure. So he said, every day, I want you to go for a walk for two hours. And then once a week, I want you to spend half the day at a cemetery. And the guy's like, are you kidding? I don't have time to do that. I'm very busy. I'm very important. And the doctor's like, yeah, well, do this. Because all those people, when you spend time at the cemetery, you'll see all these other people who thought just like you, that they were very, very important, that the world would fall apart without them. And look at where they are now. And I think that's a good reminder. Because that's yeah. something every once in a while I go and sit at a cemetery. Because it's like, all these people it's very easy to think that they're the other, that, they're, that you know, this won't happen to me. They were different. And it's like, no, they all thought the world revolved around them. And look, they're all dead and buried. That is our fundamental problem, right? That like, is like that we think we're, uh, we think we're the star of the show. Everybody thinks that way. And it's a very effective mechanism to, you know, it's very, it makes us very quick to blame. It makes us very quick not to take responsibility. It makes us very quick to do all these things. And I think, yeah, you're right. Getting perspective on that can be so helpful for waiting. And just realizing, like, slow down. What's the rush? You know, like, <clears throat> we'll get there. I always like to remind myself, too, that, like, when I'm struggling with waiting is, like, did I do the thing that I wanted to do today? And if I did, then I'm good because I'm working towards it. And the important thing is, like, and I think this is what we forget, too. We're so focused on the end. We forget the journey is really living. That's life. Because the end is the same for everybody. So, like, you know, I, I ask myself, like, did I, you know, if I'm trying to learn something, did I spend at least five minutes doing it? Yes, then I'm good today. I can take a break if I need to or whatever, you know, because I'm working towards it. And that's all I can do is work towards it. That's all I can ever do is work towards it. I, re I actually, I mean, when you just said that, that just struck me because I think that one is really important. Like, could could you imagine having one thing that you're supposed to do each day and getting that done and being like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I literally have a, non a never ending list of stuff that I need yeah. to get done. Mm -hmm. And I expect me to get done all of it every single day. And every single day I'm disappointed because I didn't clear out the whole entire list. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, at AA meetings, they say, like, did you have a drink today? No. All right. You won. Great. Yeah. Right. You did good. <laughs> you did good yeah. today. Congratulate yeah. yourself. Because we're so, I think that's our other problem, though, with waiting, is that we're so quick to judge ourselves for our, for our perceived failures rather than look at our successes each day. You know? We all have a lot to do. Like, people forget, we all have a lot of shit we have to do every day. You know, we have a lot of responsibilities. There's a lot of stresses. Sometimes we don't feel good. Sometimes we feel good. You know, I mean, there's so many things going on every day. And it's like we put so much pressure on ourselves to get to, to solve every problem. But guess what? There's, there's going to be more problems tomorrow. Leave tomorrow's mm -hmm. problems for tomorrow. Do what you can today and, and be grateful that you got done what you got done. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another I'm, I'm really enjoying reading through the way of integrity again. Great book. book. And I love it like is. the the analogy of, of Dante, the Inferno. Yeah. Because when you when you just said that, she was talking about towards the end of it where he gets double dipped in that river. And like the first dip, he forgets all the bad stuff that he's ever done. And the second dip, he remembers all the good stuff that he's ever done. And it's just like, 
man, if we could do that every day, like just forget, let go of all the bad stuff you've done and then just focus on all the good stuff you've done, we would probably feel incredible every day. Well, you know, what's funny. Like when we talk about, like we've talked about Marcus Aurelius a lot. We've talked about a lot of like Nietzsche, a lot, a lot of philosophers. And like, I love, I've always, I've always loved ethics and I've, I've taught it for a long time. And like, you know, ethics is about the good life and about being a good person. And whenever I teach my students, I always tell them like, you know, it, when you read this stuff, if you just, especially when you read it the first time, it seems like, you know, it can be, it can be so easy to be like, oh, okay, so I need to do that to be a good person. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying you have to keep working at it. And in effect, the good person is an ideal. Like you're never going to be the perfectly good person. You work towards it. And so you just have to keep doing, moving forward. That's the important thing. And I think like that's what's so hard about waiting is because we get so caught up in end the goals, not just doing it, you know, not just day by day doing it. Some days are going to be good. Some are going to be bad. And it's OK. I think we need self-compassion is very important for waiting. Mm, that's a great point. Yeah. And so like self-compassion, I read this book called Self-Compassion by Dr. Kristen Neff, and she talks about I thought I found this very helpful. Because this was something that was new to me was what self-compassion is, is recognizing that this is a moment of suffering. Recognizing that in life there's suffering and other people suffer. And then just asking yourself, how can I be kind to myself? Yeah, that's a good one. Like, do, and and this, this is something that I use on a regular basis when I'm suffering. And it's really, really helpful. Because like usually I'm self-flagellating when I'm suffering. I'm yeah. like, oh, why am I suffering? What's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> so like, instead of that, just being like, oh, this is a moment of suffering. In life, yeah. there's suffering. Other people suffer too. How can I be kind to myself? And then just cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny. We like we love whipping ourselves, you know, oh and getting God. down ourselves. We do. We like it. We get off on it. It's crazy. And it makes no <laughs> sense because we just make it worse and worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. We're weird, we're weird creatures. Oh, mm -hmm. I just had another one. I was going to say it. I can't remember now. Damn. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah, it'll come back. But yeah. And also, like, uh, I remember one time I looked up uh, the definition of, of patience. And one of the things it said was endurance. And this was new to me because I didn't actually relate those two. But like you think about endurance running or like an, any endurance sport, and it's something where, number one, you have to build it up like you're not born with it. And no. number two, a lot of times it just hurts and you got to you have to endure. You have to deal with it. And so like that reminded me that with patience, it's something that, number one, I have to build up. And the only way I can build it up is by being in situations that test my patience. And number two, I just have to endure. Like some stuff you just have to get through and that's it. Yeah. That reminds me of something else too, which is, you know, like all the things that we look back on as being our greatest achievements or the things we look back on with like the most pride are often the things that were the hardest, took the most effort and took the longest to get. When things are super easy to get, we don't appreciate them. We appreciate because usually when things are really hard, we learn something, we grew. We overcame some obstacle. We, you know, we became better people, whatever. And I think, you know, you got to remember that too. I think with waiting, it's like, you know, we want the end goal so fast, but we often forget that like a lot, 90% of the time, it's like that struggle is going to make it so much more valuable, like so much more valuable that if you just had it handed to you, you wouldn't care about it. It wouldn't matter. You know, it's like, it's so much, it feels so much better when you get it on your own terms yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to put in the work. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. Yeah, we're all just trying to create ourselves, right? And I think, oh, that's what I was going to remember, too. It was like, I just remember what I was going to say. Huh, see, came back. You know, and, uh... remember, too, that it's like, you know, our interpretations are all plastic. You know, we're looking when you're waiting and you're struggling. And I, I, I remind myself this all the time. And sometimes it really helps. Sometimes it doesn't always help. I'm just being honest, but like it does. But like, remember that. This is just a way you're looking at the world. You are looking at the world a certain way right now, and you can change that. It was, uh, was it the Tigers who said, like, you know, men are the measure of all things, the things that are that they are, things that are not that they're not, right? We're meaning makers. 
So when you're really struggling, you're really having a bad day, remind yourself, I can totally interpret this differently. What's great about today? What's good about being alive? What's awesome with my life? You know, whatever. Start looking for things positive and start changing that mental interpretation of reality and see the world differently. Sometimes take a walk is a great one. I think a good mm-hmm. one for helping. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's okay to have terrible days, terrible yeah. weeks, terrible months. You know, yeah. it's it's part of life. Uh, I think like nowadays it's it's very difficult because we're sold this idea that everything's supposed to be good. But remember that that's people selling you stuff. Like right. they're literally trying to get your money. That's why they're telling you your life is supposed to be awesome all the time. Or people on social media lying about how good their life are. <laughs> so that, but why do they do that? Yeah. To make more yeah. money, you know? Yeah. So like everything is just to get more money. Whereas if instead it's like, yeah, life sucks sometimes. Sometimes you're just going to be miserable. It's going to be terrible. You know what? Your life doesn't need to be good all the time. Sometimes it's just going to stink. And that's just the way it is. I remind myself that all week because my this last week has been hard for me. But like, it's okay. And I know Mm -hmm. it'll end. It'll, you know, I'll be on an uptick again soon. So Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you just got to do it. Wait for it. You just got to wait for it. It's kind of crazy. So like, I, I tell you that I do these ice baths every once in a while. And no matter how many times I do it, it's still like insanely painful. And, but it's always like, it's, uh, what is that? Like the tangent to the line. Okay. So like, yeah. you know, when, you know, when it gets, when, it, when it gets as terrible as it's going to get, and my mind is saying, there's no way I can deal with this. That's almost always the end of it. And mm-hmm. like, I start to see those patterns in my life where like, when things are getting so bad that I'm like, there's no way I can handle this. That's usually the top. And then yeah. when things are getting so good, I'm like, oh, my life is so freaking awesome. That's usually the best it's going to get. <laughs> That's it. And it's going to go in the other direction. <laughs> you maxed out. Now you're on the downturn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one last thing I would say about waiting, too, is it, this is just from personal experience, too. I know when I get like, especially when I get down and I'm most frustrated, I can be quick to I can be quick to look around and start blaming things within my own sphere. And I've learned to stop doing that. And that's really helpful too. Mm. Like, you know, because it's it's we're I think we're like I don't want to say like program, but like we're we have a tendency to want to push that blame off ourselves onto the world. So it's very easy to be like, oh, it's this way because of that person in my life or because of that thing or because of this circumstance in society or this situation. And instead of doing that, just take a step back and just don't blame anything. You know, we said it before, like what the Taoist, Taoist a beginner blames others of the world, right? The master blames um, himself and the or, or no, Yeah. And the enlightened he blames one. himself and the master. Yeah. Yeah, it blames no blames one. no one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the truth, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that that is like one of the most important things too, because I fall in that trap all the time where I start to look around. I start to get mad at like the people around me or like, you know, circumstances. And none of that has anything to do with it. I might just be having a bad day. So just take a break. Yeah. We're Wait. all just a bunch of silly bunnies trying to have the best time we can. Yeah. It's really it. Yep. Waiting for a hawk to come down and just snatch us up. <laughs> Bingo. So there you have it. How to wait. I hope that was helpful for you. It was helpful for me because I know I've been struggling with this and I'm glad we can meet up. Me too. I feel better. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So uh, if you did enjoy this, make sure to check it out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Like, share, subscribe. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.